Today on the program, we have someone who does what I do. He's a public speaker, and really, he knows how to really leverage your brand and expand your business by getting out there and speaking. So check this out to expand your brand, to really expand your marketing. This is Odell Bazell. Welcome to Advance with Mike Acker, the podcast designed to help entrepreneurs, business leaders, and professionals alike break through barriers by improving their practical leadership skills and increasing confidence in speaking. Your host is a best-selling author, executive coach, and founder of the Advance Public Speaking School and Advantage Publishing Group, two companies dedicated to providing an edge for leaders. Find out more about Mike at mikeacker.com. Now here's your host, Mike Acker. Well, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have Odell. Odell, I'm glad you're here. Welcome to you as well. Hey, I'm excited to be here. I appreciate your time. I can't wait to get into some great things about public speaking and how it can make more money. That's right. And really, it's amazing what public speaking does. You and I do the same thing, but from different angles. So I'm excited to to hear about that and to push it out there and really encourage our audience to pro- to really progress in their career, regardless of where you are through speaking. But tell us a little bit about yourself, because you have a fun story here about how you got to this spot right here. So give us a little background. Yeah, for sure. I, I always wanted to, to make a lot of money, Mike. I think most people are like that. I was the kid that was very vocal about that when I was younger. And my dad, he put rich dad, poor dad into my hands, my freshman year of high school. And I was like, okay, I want to be rich and I'm going to be rich for my first thing. I'm going to play basketball. I'm going to make millions of dollars. And then I'm going to invest all that money in real estate and all of that. And uh, then uh, God stopped me from growing and (laughs) and I didn't grow anymore. (laughs) I've been the same height since I was 14. And um, so I started selling candy in high school, me and my best friend. And we made we made a a good little bit of money. We made about 75K before we graduated. And um, I thought that, okay, entrepreneurship is the thing. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I knew nothing about business, though. And that's a lesson to to anybody probably has, has experienced that just because you know how to make money doesn't mean, you know, business. And so I was kind of caught in that place where, okay, I, I make a lot of money figuring it out, going to college. And then I figured out that I didn't know anything about business. Right. And so all my candy money, all that stuff went away. I graduate. I'm broke. I'm less than broke because I'm in student loan debt. And my public speaking professor, Dr. Pond, I remember it was hot in North Carolina, humid, uh, May 12th, 2007, when I graduated. He came up to me and my family were taking pictures. And he said, hey, Odell, uh, you know, what, what are your plans? What do you got coming up next? And I'm like, nothing. (laughs) I got, I had no idea what I was going to do. And he made a suggestion that changed my life forever. He said, you should be a professional speaker. You were my best public speaking student freshman that I ever remembered in my 25 years. You got a lot of talent. You should do that. Now you and I know what a professional speaker is now, but at 22, I didn't know what that meant. I wasn't famous. I wasn't rich. I wasn't you know, anything. I was just a kid that barely graduated college. And then he went on to tell me, as long as you have a message, you have an audience to buy that message, you can make money. And I thought, sounds pretty simple. So I just run my mouth and make money. Great. <laughs> like yeah. That's what we'll do. And then I discovered again, uh, like with the candy, just because you can make money doesn't mean that you know business. And so I got out there, I started speaking to colleges about um, nine months later. And hadn't looked back since. But as of recently, I learned better and I'm doing better on how to use public speaking as a medium to not just make money, but to market and uh, bring in more leads. And and I think that's really the huge area that I want to go towards here, because a lot of the people I work with, they find me through my book, Speak With No Fear. And that book, Basically, if you're picking up that book, they're not like you. They're saying, I don't want to speak. I don't want to run my mouth. And I'm going to make money doing something else. And maybe they're really great at something, but they're they're not great at that. Or they 
feel like they're not great at that. But you're talking about how public speaking is not just for someone who wants to go out there in front of college students and go, wow, here I am. But it's also for the business owner who wants to build their business or for that mid-level professional or, or top-end professional who wants to expand their platform. So talk to us a little bit about the marketing aspect of speaking. For sure. So I believe you're going to make money. You just said it. I just want to say it to, to go into the, the answer to your question. And public speaking going to make money as an income opportunity. I speak a company, uh, an organization, somebody pays me to speak to their audience. So that's one way. And whenever you mention public speaking, people that think about making money in public speaking, they think about that way. They envision Tony Robbins. They envision a Brendan Burchard, uh, Les Brown on stage in front of a whole a Jim Rohn, whoever. That's what they think about. But the, the other way, and I believe public speaking is the most powerful this way, is to use it as a marketing medium because every business has to market. And in this world specifically, in the 20s, the 2020s, there's so much going on. And public speaking is the most powerful medium, Mike, because it's the closest thing we have to voice to voice. I don't want to buy from a cold institution. I want to buy from a warm personality. That's everybody. That's why we love celebrities. That's why celebrity endorsements work and all that stuff. And so if you're an entrepreneur or you're business minded or you're a high level professional, you have to understand this. The one that can public speak the best to their target audience wins. And the, the, the spoiler alert is you're doing it already. Like even if you're not on a stage in front of a corporate boardroom or whatever, you're doing some type of public communication. And so what all you have to do is shift your thinking to whereas, well, I'm sending out all these emails, I'm sending out all these posts or what have you, just put a video on it. That's public speaking. Just like what we're doing, a podcast, interviewing, public speaking. If you are doing some sort of teaching, if you're showing your team how to do something, public speaking. You start thinking about it and you're like, wow, public speaking is the thing. You just have to figure out what works best with your skill set, with your mindset and with your tool set. That's extremely well said. I call this in my my 10th book's coming out next month and it's called Speak with Confidence. And I talk about public speaking being the universal advantage. And that's what you were just saying there. I mean, really, you could be, yeah, the high level CEO or the celebrity, but you could also be the the person who is writing code. But if you got to get into the room and talk about the code that you're writing, even if you're not in front of hundreds of people, but you're in front of five, that's public speaking. And if you do it better, you're going to progress more. You're going to advance more. So uh, my second book was actually on writing and crafting a message. And one of the questions I wanted to ask you is get your take on what are some of the mistakes that people make when they're trying to craft their message, whether it's this level or five people, or what are some of those mistakes? I think this, this is a great question. The biggest mistake I'll say, and, and anybody listening, I tell my kids this, and my wife and I, when we get into our spirited spats, I say this too. You have those too? Yeah, a little bit. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, life is perfect, but <laughs> every now and again. But we have two ears one mouth. For most people, they're good talkers, Mike. They, I can run my mouth. That's how I was at the beginning. When Dr. Pond said, oh, you can be a professional speaker. I'm like, oh, all I got to do is get up there and talk. That's it. No, the best speakers listen to their audience so that they know what to say. See, we get our content from the people we're trying to speak to, teach, or sell. We get our context and we help them wrap their mind around all of that by what we say to them. That's important. And so if you're thinking about, oh, my gosh, if I get up here and freeze, you're thinking about you. But if you're thinking they need to hear this, they need to understand this, because what I got from listening to them is they're struggling here and here. So you're doing them a service by delivering a message, because a lot of times in, in this world and communication in general, we are finding it very difficult 
to communicate what we feel and what we think. And so your part as the professional, as the leader, you're just helping them work out what's already in them to make it more effective. And so that's why if I go in front of a group of college students, I'm not going to use a say by the bell reference. <laughs> I'm not, they're not going to get it. Hey, it relaunched. What are you talking about? <laughs> they, no, they, they don't. They don't even pay attention. They don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not going to talk about things that I would talk to with the 35, 40 plus crowd, because I know that's not the conversation that's running in their mind. They're not thinking about that. So I would tell stories about when I was a teenager. I would tell stories about different things, celebrities that they that they know that I met. I would. And then the same token, if I'm speaking to a group of professionals that are 45 plus, I'm not going to talk about Lil Uzi Vert. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about those people because they don't they don't understand. And so being able to be a good listener, observing what other people are talking about, seeing what conversations are going on in the minds of your audience, and then just entering those conversations with advice that is helpful and advice that they can execute. I think that's a great answer. A lot of people get up in front and go, what do I want to say? I'm going into this team meeting. What do I want to say? Well, I'm getting them in front of people. What do I want to say? And I was even listening to a guy get ready for a sermon one time. And he said, what do I want to say to people? I thought, man, that's just a wrong, that's the wrong area. What do people need to hear? What do people want to hear? So in your mind, is this is probably one of the things that separates a good speaker from a great speaker. But what else is part of that? or maybe even an average and bad speaker, what is really differentiating that great business professional who does a great job communicating? That's a good question. I got to quote uh, my friend, business partner, Stan Pearson II. He says this all the time. Good becomes obsolete when great shows up. And I, I love that quote so much. I, I haven't figured out how to turn it into mine yet, so I got to give him credit for it. <laughs> yeah. But Good speakers, good, you, you you can talk. You have a gift of gab. Maybe you're you're funny every now and again. Maybe you say something that, oh, that's funny or that's thought provoking or what, what have you. That's good. A great speaker is somebody that can speak into the audience so well that the audience doesn't even have to say anything and they felt like they had a conversation. That's a great speaker. Now, how do we get to that point? We get to that point two ways. The first way I already mentioned, I already talked about, we already have to know what's kind of going on in their mind a little bit so we can insert ourselves into that conversation. That's the first part. So you have to know your audience well. And I just wanted to echo that because it's very important. Here's the second way. You have to practice. Sounds cliche. It sounds, oh, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. You have to have a masterful hold and handle over how you communicate. And professionals practice more than they perform. So you have to, first of all, want to do it. And this is something I tell uh, students and I tell people that take my courses. You have to want to do it. And so for those that are maybe they're, they're still a little fearful. They're still your willingness to get up there and practice at all is the first step. But you have to go beyond that. You have to continually. OK, this point, this point, if I can make it shorter, succinctly, if I could say it like this in five words instead of 10. OK, it's a shorter point. If I can give a quote, then insert that and then expound on that quote in my own words. OK, then I can piece it together. And then once you start doing that, your mind starts to morph around the fact that, wait a minute, I speak all the time. I talk to my wife. I talk to my kids. I talk to my friends. I talk to the person that's waiting on me. I speak all the time. So then you start organizing your thoughts and your words a whole lot better in everyday language and you're practicing without knowing it. And so you have to, first of all, again, just to reiterate, know who your audience is, and then you have to be intentional about how you practice. It could be as simple as this. You know you have a meeting coming up. The meeting's in two days. Oh, gosh, what do I say? You have to envision it just like athletes. Okay, I'm going to walk in the room, 
And then they're going to, there's going to be that awkward silence before anybody speaks. You walk through all of that in your mind. Cause when you do that, your mind ex- is experiencing it. Our minds cannot distinguish between fantasy and reality. So our minds are going through it. All we have to do is just keep putting our mind through it. And then you'll find that, wow, that was really great. What I said that time, then you'll get better and then you'll get better. I love that you talk about the practice aspect of this and it's something that I've, I've just gone over a whole bunch too. So we're right in sync with this. A lot of people want to jump to excellence and, and, and think about weight loss, right? People are like, what's the pill I can take that will make me look like the guy on Thor, right? What can I do that will just jump me right there? But really you got to put in the reps. I mean, you don't get to be look like the rock Dwayne Johnson by just you know, avoiding one meal, right? You got to put the work in and same with, with public speaking. The, the good news for everybody is that the bar for public speaking in the business world is so, so low that if they just put a little bit of work into it, they'll get better. I mean, I have been on, I've audited so many and it's just ridiculous how low that bar is. And I'm like, well, if we could just get you here, you're better than everybody else. However, I love that quote on great. I'm going to look away at it so I can. I want to tweak it and make it mine too. Uh, okay. What about for the people who they, they actually like public speaking, several people are listening and they're like, yeah, I want to do that. And I love the idea of getting paid. So what do I need to do when I go out there and try to become a paid public speaker? In fact, let's do it this way. What's the biggest mistake that people make when they try to become a paid public speaker? They depend on their talent. So just just like you were talking about somebody's listening like, oh, yeah, Michael, Dell, yeah, I'm not afraid to speak. Up. I'm always the one to speak up. It's not. And so they know that they're good. They're a good talker. They're somebody that never had a problem in college. They were the ones doing the presentation, that person. And they know, oh, shoot, if and like you said, the the bar is so low. They've seen other speakers get paid five, ten thousand dollars and be horrible. And so they're, I can do that. So they have that mindset and they think that public speaking and maybe life in general is a, is a meritocracy. Meaning if I'm good, they'll find me. That's not how it works. Public speaking is performative, but it's not like the performing arts. It's not like acting. It's not like athletics, all of those things. When you do something really good, if somebody can sing really well, oh, I hear it. Maybe they can be in a band. Maybe they can do this. Maybe they can do that. Public speaking is, oh, great. You're good. If you're not a pastor, if you're not a teacher, if. OK, who, who cares? The, the public speaking world is still really, really small compared to what everybody else thinks. I remember being in a room uh, in Buffalo, New York. It was before the pandemic, which seems like another time Uh, it was. And I asked it was a group of um, students. They were 17, 17, 18 years old. And I said, hey, y'all, how many of y'all have never heard of me before? Everybody raises their hands. I'm like, gosh, I really keep thinking I'm more famous than that. So good. Makes you feel so good right there. Right. (laughs) But then I did this because I was talking about networking and how your network determines your net worth, all of that stuff. And I said, well, how many of y'all have heard of Tony Robbins? It's about 100 students in here. These are the, the, the golden students. Nobody raised their hand. So I'm like, well, well shoot, oh, okay. How many of you, and I started naming all these, all these giants in the public speaking space that I admire. A couple of hands went up when I said um, Eric Thomas. A couple of hands went up. After that, nobody knew. And it just it reminded me in that moment that. Wow, a lot of people don't know about the industry, but to those that want to get paid, that's how it is. If you ask somebody in your in your community group, hey, are you looking for speakers? They're going to be like speakers for what? And so the first thing you have to identify is a starving crowd is a starving crowd. And I had the book somewhere around. here. I love the book um, Starving Crowd. You have to find where people are already looking for that thing. And so don't depend on your talent. Depend on your search. Find the groups, find the organizations, find the industries that continually book speakers. That's the first step that you have to do 
then you can kind of come back and say, okay, they hire speakers here. So if you're in the financial arena, okay, what kind of speakers come to these conferences? What kind of speakers come to these associations, et cetera, et cetera. The reason why I started with colleges way back when was because I was 22 and I, nobody, I didn't know anything from anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Who's, who's going to want to hear from a 22 year old, barely got out of college kid. There was no money in the bank. Kids that want to graduate college. It's like, that'd be cool. So that's where I started. And then I learned the industries and I learned that the college market is a multi, multi, multi billion with a B market. Because in every market, and for those listening that want to get paid, this is a big tip. Every market has industries that have associations. And everybody that hires a speaker usually is a professional in some form or fashion. All you have to do is find that association. And then you super serve an underserved association. When you do that, you're a big fish in a little pond. And so that's why I've made over a million dollars in the college space alone but I've also helped clients and other people do the same thing because all I do is say, okay, Odell is the motivational communication fun guy. That's, that's Odell's brand. Well, Mike is more serious. Mike is more, maybe he's more comedic or whatever. Mike, you could speak on this event. You could speak on this platform because they're going to book speakers like you. And, and that's it. And I, I can exchange business with everybody and it doesn't matter. Well, there's a whole lot of industries like that. So if you're looking to get paid, you just find out, okay, where do I fit? Where does my expertise go? Okay, who is hiring speakers? Not just who is, who is the group, who is the department, who, who's, what's the job title of the person or the people that hire speakers. Find those people, ingratiate yourself to those people, get to know those people, get them to like you, and then you're, you're home free. Hey, that's, that's incredible. I think a lot of people here are probably even as they listen to it, they go, oh, that'd be great. I'd like to get paid the $10,000. I mean, that was a great check. The first time I received a $10,000 check. Was, oh, that's fantastic. And so you're, you're giving them a little bit of a roadmap because you and I have all, all heard those people who say, I want to become a public speaker. Well, what do you want to speak on? Oh, anything. Who do you want to speak to? Anybody. Where do you want to speak? Everywhere. <laughs> it's like, well, it's not exactly how it works. How much do you want to charge? I don't know, fifteen thousand dollars. Like, uh, okay, we're gonna start at the bottom and and work your way up. But I actually did a video, I think, last September on how to become a paid public speaker and really some of these different areas, and it really jives with what you're talking about right here. Let, let's talk about the technology here and the resources. What are some resources that you give to people, whether they're going to become a paid public speaker? or they're going to become a, just a better professional or whatever it might look like. What are some resources? I lead training programs, but mine are more um, niche. I only take a couple clients per, uh, per month and it's kind of a one-on-one program and we have a small group and everything. So I'm interested in hearing about some other resources that you might have when people want to become a better pu- uh, public speaker. For sure. So the the number one resource that I give people is I let them and I'm sure in some form or fashion you do this in all your groups. I let them borrow my confidence with no interest. Because in order for you to speak, you're you're literally and I take it I take it deep here because it's important. You're literally taking a part of your life, part of your essence, and you're pouring it into other people. That's literally what you're doing when you're speaking. Your voice, it comes from you, it comes from your spirit. So you have to you have to treat it as such, but it's really difficult. Even the confident person that says, oh, I want to get paid to speak. Once life starts like boxing you a little bit and you ask somebody, hey, you hire speakers. And like, no, why would we hire you to speak? You start getting a little bit of that pushback. Your confidence goes down. So the very first resource I give, I let you borrow my confidence interest free. And that's important. The second thing that I would say is you want to continually speak. Now, the pandemic gave us a gift in making virtual a thing. And so I say like, this is the microphone I have is is like I bought this microphone eight years ago. I was old microphone. But I on my studio, I have a sure mic that's more expensive. So you, you buy technology like that 
if you want to do virtual, if you want to have like the nice setup that you have, because again, it instills confidence and you're like, okay, cool. And you, and you get to practice where it counts. And then another resource that I offer, and I'm, I'm the only person I know about, I'm not saying I'm the only person, I'm the only person I know about. I literally introduce you to people that could book you. So when people join my program, and, and it's only for the high level, the person that you're talking about, Mike, that's, I want to get paid to speak. I'm sick of them hiring that person and that person. You know, I have some extra time. I have a team maybe, and I want to make some extra income, et cetera. I just introduce you. So every month we have what I call a, a hot seat panel where I bring in about five to 10 decision makers in various industries. And we just talk. We literally talk. And a lot of people, especially the go-getters, they're like, well, what are you supposed to talk about? What are you supposed to, we need to figure out what they need. Yeah. That's what we talk about. Yeah. And then that's research because then you're figuring out this is what they look for when they hire. This is the type of speaker that's great. This is the speaker that they made a mistake on when they paid $10,000. And this is the other speaker that they should have paid 10000 We talk about all those things every single month. Mm-hmm. And so that's a resource in and of itself, because then those people could be prospective clients. Uh, They could be individuals that you could lean on and get research from. Another, I guess, resource that everybody could use is you have to have game film. You have to have game film. So I give people that every month, you get a chance to talk it through virtually. But if you don't have any video of you speaking or anything like that, study the greats. Study what they've done, study their cadence, get really into the weeds with it because you only need one little thing. And I'll go back to the statement that you said, Mike, the bar for especially business speaking. If you want to get into college, you got to be a little more theatrical, a little bit because they're they're younger. But for grownups, the bar is like as long as you don't stutter and as long as you make sense. okay, yeah. And you going to help me make some more money or help me do my job better. I'm listening. All you have to do is add a little bit of a zest to it and watching other people do it. Your mind again will say, okay, well, we can do something like that. Remember you told that joke at Thanksgiving. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll start push pushing it together there. So I just to review really quick, when you're thinking about resources, you have to think about, first of all, your confidence. Then you have to think about, well, who are the people? People are the true resource. People are the true asset. And so who are the people? How can I get to know them? How can I research what they need and how I can deliver it to them? And then watch other people do it. You shouldn't just be a performer, be a student. Yeah, Yeah, that's great. I love that you got both spectrums there for the person who's just in the business world and wants to become a better speaker or the person who wants to get out there and speak resources on both ends. And let me just grab a hold of a couple of those thoughts too that technology aspect. I mean, that shows up in this book and because a lot of people there, I mean, think about it like this, you go out on a date and you dress and you know, you don't look good or you don't know that you don't look good and you smell bad. Oh, you, well, it's not going to go well. And then you're going to wonder why it didn't well go well. And until someone says, well, it's because you stink and you're, you look awful and you're like, Oh, well, Newsflash for a lot of people, because it is a newsflash, because they don't realize a lot of people's virtual setup stinks. And you look at them, they're staring down over here and they got this light and you can't see and they got the blurry fuzz around them and you just, they don't look good. And so the first thing, I mean, even this $2.99 on Kindle, it's just like, gosh, come on, just do something better. So I love that you went into the technology. It will make you feel more confident, like putting on clean clothes. And then for others, it is, it's that connection, get connected to people. And then I I love that they could borrow your confidence. They can't borrow mine, but they can borrow yours. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Years ago, I I did this Facebook video called, you you borrow or lend, lend people your belief, or I lend you my belief or something like that. Similar type idea. Okay. Okay. Let's, um, let's get some real practical stuff here and just give some of the speaking techniques. And these are probably some uh, things that I do as well, but I love to hear your spin on them, your take, your way of going about it. What are some key public speaking communication techniques that people can practice? 
Well, this this will probably be a review for a bunch of people, but I believe we need to be. Oh, no, no, it's not a review. We need this is this is like people need this. People need this. This is a brand new information for some. I love it. So first and foremost, how you start, how you start a presentation is critical. And there are a lot of different ways you can do it. You don't have to be like anybody else other than yourself, but start off in such a way that's going to shock or all the audience. And I'll give you a couple of real examples. So if I'm speaking in front of, I have, I want to say four or five association talks coming up in the next few weeks. There aren't going to be anybody in the audience that's 30, that's less than 30. They're going to be buttoned up professionals are going to, you know, all of that. I'm not going to start off with a rap like I do with the high school group or a poem that I do with a co college group. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start off with a story that takes them back to a time in which they knew nothing because most professionals think they know everything. So I'm going to take them back to the time where they, they knew nothing. So I'll tell a story and I tell a story coming from off stage. It's going to be in person. So this is if you're in person coming from off stage where I'm just talking and they're like, wait, what is, what is he talking? Like they're, they're trying to find out where I am. That's a little simple thing anybody can do. Just come from off stage because then they're looking for you. That's simple. Another thing is you can start with a powerful quote or a question. Try not to make it a cliche quote. Try to make it a different quote. Quote yourself, expound on a quote, mess up a quote, do something that makes them think, wow, okay. For example, Benjamin Franklin said, life's tragedy is that we get old too soon, but wise too late. Anybody ever been there before? You wish you would have knew something long time ago that you just found out. Let me see those hands. Raise those hands. Mm, which leads me to the next thing, engagement. The more you get people to, to, to do, the better they're likely to buy. If I can get you to buy in, you will buy for me. So let me see those hands. If you're virtual, put me in the chat. I'll wait for the first three people to do it. Little stuff like that, getting people because our minds, the way that they are, is oh gosh, I got to go back and forth in between paying attention and not paying attention because we're in the generation of multitasking. So I can do this and I can have 13 tabs open. I can respond to this email, send a text. I can drive and I can eat at the same time. Like that's what people think they can do and they can't really do it that well, but they're always going back and forth in, in and out of focus. And so your job as the speaker is to make sure they're engaged. Hey, let me see those hands. Good, 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 good. Listen, I'm going to give you the energy that I give. Here's another tactic. Complete and utter honesty. That's good. This is how this is going to go. I do this with my kids all the time. <laughs> this is how this is going to go. Either you can engage me at the level that I'm engaging you, or you can stay down at that level, and then the five of us that are engaged are going to have a really, really good time. It's your choice. Yeah. You give them the choice, but you engage them and say, wait a minute. I know he didn't just say, I know they didn't just say. So all of that I'm, I'm talking about doing at the beginning. And then what you do is you just remix it. So as you're transitioning, when I teach people, when you transition, it's kind of like a new beginning. It's kind of like ending the scene in a sitcom, going to commercial and coming back real quick. So you just have to have those quick cuts to transition. Then when you end, you end with the call to action. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're not selling, if you're just doing a keynote, if you're just doing a training call to action, the way I assess whether or not I did a good job is if the audience is engaged and they do something. That's it. If they sign up for my free thingamabob at the end, I look at the how many people in the audience. If I don't get at least 20 percent participation. I didn't do a good job. And so all of those things that you can integrate into your presentations, you can get people to get up and do something. That's always good. Have visual aids. But the, the biggest thing is start well. If you start well, and then when you transition, you start well again and, and again, then you'll have them on the edge of your seat. 
Well, you know what? I was thinking about that beginning part right there, because if you take this back to the business world, I, I just really want everybody to key in on what he said. You got to start and grab their attention. Too many business presentations start out like this. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Well, we're going to look at the slide deck. Um, yeah. Okay. It's not working. I didn't, you know, practice us, uh, that well. Hold on. Can you guys see that? Uh, so, um, and, and right here, you just, already your confidence level is dropping because you're you're failing it's that's like showing up at the date and you know imagine back in that time where you went out on first date and you're just like hey yeah well uh just um yeah well you know this is my car let me see oh shoot i don't have the keys to the car um uh, uh, well i don't know where we're going really we're just going to drive around and eventually hope to find a good spot and, and, but that's what people do and that's why it's so low. So if you do just what just Adele just said, and you start out with some awe, and may maybe you give a statistic that is staggering in your in your profession, and you're looking at in oncology, and then you give something right there, or in software engineers, or in whatever it might be, or some quote from somebody in your industry, I mean, it grabs a hold of people, or that question and that engagement. Uh, the other thing I think is super funny, Odell, is when people do this, they talk for 45 minutes and it's passive. So there's no engagement, passive, 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 passive. And then at the very end, they say, anybody have any questions? <laughs> Just like, and then, and then they're shocked that there's no questions. And so I always tell people, let them know along the way that there's going to be questions and engage them along the way, because then they're ready to be engaged with you. Well, this is this is a lot of fun talking to you about this, and I'm sure we could go on and on here. And uh, let me just grab a hold of any kind of final thoughts that you would say that you would just encourage the people, both as a paid public speaker to promote their business, maybe as a chiropractor or something like that, or as just that person who's in some kind of level of management who wants to get better. What would you say to these two two people? Yeah, so I'll, I'll go to the to the professional, to the person that wants to get better. Public speaking is the fastest way to give you confidence and to establish you as an expert and a go-to person to get promoted. By far, it's, it's the absolute best. So if you can pick a skill that if I focus on this one thing, if I don't get any better in my job and anything else, but I get better in public speaking, you automatically enhance your ability to earn revenue, but it'll also infuse so much confidence in you. You'll you'll feel better. And I don't know who you know, who all is listening or anything like that. But in your relationships, you have more confidence with your kids. You'll have more confidence, all those different things. So that's the, the first person I want to talk to. The second person, if you're that entrepreneur, that high level entrepreneur, that business person, I want to let you know. If you want to scale your business up, if you want to make more money than you ever thought you could before, adding public speaking as a marketing component to your business is the absolute best thing you can do. Because what you can do with public speaking, the power of public speaking, even if it's not you, here's, here's what's really cool. Public speaking is the only skill that you can buy, you can rent, and you can sell. So if you're thinking, well, Mike, this is great for you. You know, you guys great podcast. You've been doing this for a long time. Odell, it's great for you. You've been speaking, all that stuff. Oh, that's great. But no, you could get somebody that's in a parallel field to do an inspirational, informational seminar, get a whole group of people together, and then let somebody give the inspiration. You get the information and you have an easy buy. Because public speaking can create an environment in which people want to buy. And so that's what I would say. If you're that high level entrepreneur, that business person, and you're trying to figure out how can I make more money in less time, public speaking. If you're that high level professional that's thinking, how can I better set myself up to get promoted? The answer is and always will be public speaking. I'm going to take that clip right there and show it to people when they're looking at working on a public speaking coach and, and point them towards you, point them to a program because you, you're absolutely right. And thank you so much for sharing that, man. It has been so much fun having you on this program. I know that 
that this will benefit the audience, both on the podcast and on the YouTube. So it's just absolute pleasure having you on this program, Odell. Where can people find out more about what you do? Where can people connect with you? For sure. Um, PublicSpeakingProfits.com. On that website, I have a mini course. It's free. All you have to do is, uh, I believe, click a button and then um, insert your email and it'll be four videos that you can watch in less time than you watch your favorite Netflix show. And uh, it talks about how you can get paid to advertise. It talks about how you can become a better public speaker and how you can use public speaking to double your leads in your business. And it's all free. Um, it's my gift to you um, and my gift to this audience for Mike allowing me uh, to spend some time and space. Um, other than that, I'm the only Odell Bazell online. So O-D-E-L-L-B-I-Z-Z-E-L-L, the only one. So if you search my name in any of the social medias that you frequent, I'll be there. But I appreciate your time and I appreciate your attention. Hey, absolutely. You're right. Your name is a little bit less common than mine. There's quite a few Mike Ackers. So, so. Oh, yeah, there's a lot, but I'm the first page of Google research. So that's fun. Hey, I really do appreciate it. And we'll put all of those links into the show notes as well and on YouTube so people can can find you and connect with you. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And to all of our listeners, thank you so much for being a part of the program and for being part of advancing your career with myself and with our different guests. Make sure to share this, to like it, to comment on it, and we'll see you on the next show. Thanks for listening to Advance with Mike Acker, a podcast designed to provide an edge for leaders through improving practical leadership skills and increasing confidence in speaking. Mike is a best-selling author and business owner who has helped many leaders increase their skills and their confidence, propelling them to new heights in their personal and professional endeavors. Join an incredible group of professionals taking the steps to become better leaders at connect.stepstoadvance.com. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. 